Hello, welcome to another installment of the Central American Group's podcast, in which experts discuss topics related to doing business in Costa Rica, El Salvador, and the rest of the region. Hello, welcome to another edition of the series of podcasts that the Central American Group puts on. We like speaking with individuals that have knowledge uh, about doing business in the region. Today, we are happy to have with us uh, Augustina Mortola. She is from a company that is a consulting firm that is in, she's in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And the name of the firm is Jones Lang LaSalle. Welcome, Augustina. Can you please uh, introduce yourself for our listeners? Of course. Hi, Stephen. How are you? Thank you very much for having me. It's such a pleasure to come and talk to you. Well, um, as you already uh, present me, my name is Augustina Mortela. I work for JLL. I'm part of a strategic consulting team, and we do perform um, different assignments for real estate investments. I'm based in Buenos Aires, Argentina, but I'm part of a regional platform, so we do cover all Latin America. Well, today, tell us a little bit about uh, the topic that we're going to cover, if you can just give a, uh, an introduction of that. Oh, of course. So um, we're going to talk about shared service centers. And we recently um, carried out a regional study on shared service centers industry in LATAM that included, you know, the main markets. And we also undertook a deep dive into emerging markets like El Salvador that, you know, have great potential to foster this service platform. So um, the idea is to talk about, you know, what are shared service centers, what activities are performing different um, operations and to really understand um, if there's potential in LATAM and to share with you some of our findings. Okay, so today we're going to concentrate mainly on El Salvador. Just explain for the folks that might not uh, have a knowledge of this topic, what exactly are shared services? Well, um, shared services are, you know, horizontally structured operating models, which consolidates activities that provide internal services to the different business units within a company. So to put it into, you know, an easier way to understand it, you know, companies have different finance teams. So those finance teams could support one business unit or they could have a centralized finance team who gives support to all the business units within the company. So creating these horizontal structures where you centralize certain services that pr provide support to different business units that are shared services. We've seen that companies are increasingly doing this with the objective of, um, you know, internally restructuring and reducing costs, consolidating administrative functions, and really to avoid duplicating efforts between, you know, various business units. Some of the, just to, to mention, you know, some of the advantages for companies using this model include the improvement in efficiency and delivering of greater management control, and. Um, you know, this allow, allowed business units to focus on its core activity while specialized entities carry out the high volume and low strategic value transactions. What exactly uh, are the activities that are performed generally in shared service facilities? Well, within a shared service um, operation, one can find a wide range of activities that include human resources, you know, activities such as payroll, database, emailing, training, some finances like PO creation, vendor management, IT, um, purchasing, call centers, all those activities that can be centralized and can give support to different entities within a company, those can be performed from shared service centers. So um, we've seen the shared service center implementation programs for the most part are processes that run in stages, you know. In this way, the, um, the risk of failing is minimized and the deterioration of operation is avoided. So it's really important to bear in mind that the ability to centralize these services that I just mentioned is linked to the maturity of the company processes. So 
we have observed that corporations have not only began to consolidate their operation, operational services, but also to centralize its functions in markets that present favorable scenarios to their execution and success. Like um, they switch their focus and instead of identifying, you know, only areas to consolidate, they're now looking into locations that provide skilled labor, tax benefit and competitive employment costs. So what are the main markets uh, for shared services? Oh, well, we can kind of answer this question um, in two different ways. So globally, and based on the information we obtained from SCON, the, the state of global shared service industry in 2020, the most popular countries to set up in new locations are United States and India. Together, these two markets add up to 35% of the global shared service center stock that is around 3,290 locations. Um, but then when we looked into the Americas and then we focus on LATAM, that is the market we are concentrating on, um, based on JLL survey results, we believe that you know, Central and South America have great potential to foster and grow shared service center operations. So 40% of companies we survey, and we recently ran you know, a study throughout the region and we included 300 companies that had um, shared service center operations. And based on that survey, we found out that 40% of those companies plan to add more centers and more staff to their current operations. So based on our JLL survey results, we believe Latin America has a great outlook to foster the shared service center operations. We know that you did uh, a focus on uh, El Salvador. Could you provide us with a little bit of information that pertains to El Salvador and the prospects that it might have with respect to shared services? Oh, yeah, of course. So. Um, we've seen that this industry is currently growing a lot on Latin America, and as the industry and the local markets mature more and more, companies are attracted by the region's ability to drive great standardization and centralization of processes at very, very competitive costs. So if we kind of talked about El Salvador, this is kind of an emerging market with a great potential for the service. It's very cost competitive and it, we said it's very competitive. Just to give you an example, the average salary uh, for an, a shared service center resource is around $300 a month. So they also have very low inflation and they use US dollar as the main currency. And the country, well, it's considered to be the number one country in the region for, for trading across borders, according to the World Bank. So there are many benefits in these emerging markets. Just to mention other, there are also tax benefits for companies setting up shared service centers. And of course, as with any emerging market, the lack of infrastructure may present a challenge, particularly for El Salvador that we are discussing. We um, notice there is not much of a developed shared service industry. These, um, this is very positive on one hand because it brings lots of advantages for the companies that start to settling there in terms of cost, infrastructure, available labor force. But it's also a challenge because, well, firstly, what we identify based on the service we made to companies is that companies value a lot security and value a lot not exposing their workforce to um, environments that may not be um, very safe for them. So El Salvador has a very negative image as a country in terms of safety. So that could um, potentially be a challenge for this market. Um, we believe that although infrastructure is not developed yet, it's a strategic geographic location, it's cost competitiveness and it's tax advantage position this market as a strong contender to develop a competitive shared service center industry. Yeah, earlier when we were talking uh, prior to the recording, um, you commented upon the quality of the workforce that's available in El Salvador. Is there 
Anything you could tell us about that? Yeah, of course. So what we did was basically we studied, you know, different industries based on this um, general save, save, um, survey we did. And we tried to identify what were the main activities each industry performed in shared service centers. So we identified there was a niche that um, needed high um, skill labor force in terms of different um, industrial capabilities and financial capabilities. And if we looked into the El Salvador and we looked into you know, the different graduates and the different colleges they have, they do have a high um, proportion of uh, well-educated labor force. This is very challenging to get in another market and they do have it at a very competitive cost. You know, if we want to really deep down into this topic, I believe one of the challenges that one may find is in order to perform activities at a shared service center, um, speaking multi-languages, it's a must. So the population should be trained not only in Spanish, but in English and in other languages where um, that depend on the market that this shared service center is providing support to. We identify that only 15% of shared service centers provide services to local companies. So 40% of the services are within a regional scope for which the population need to speak uh, Portuguese and Spanish. And 40% of activities provided from shared service centers have a global reach. So English is the must in order to um, start this kind of operations. And we've seen in El Salvador, based on the metrics they share with us, that they um, have at least 500 people with bilingual um, abilities um, kind of per year um, with a degree. So they can generate that amount of a workforce per year. And they do not have that much um, employment offering right now. So there, there is a lot of availability of high skill of work for us as, at a very competitive cost. Okay, so taking a step back, and looking at things from uh, more of a regional uh, perspective, which are the main markets for, for these shared services in Latin America as a whole? Well, uh, if you want, if we want, you know, to position regionally, the main markets in a region are um, San Pablo, it's actually the main market. It has, you know, a big internal market and it also provides services globally. So it has a large platform. In second place, we'll have Mexico. And Mexico has two main markets. Mexico City is the biggest one and then Monterrey or Guadalajara could be the second ones. Um, on third place, we got San Jose, Costa Rica, which is really one of the um, most well-known countries in our region because they have these free trade zones when, where they centralize all the shared service centers. Um, kind of Brazil and Mexico do not have free trade zones where they provide shared service centers from because their kind of tax incentives are not region geographically, geographically centered. They are distributed around the country. So you got shared service centers operations around the country. And then after San Jose, we got Buenos Aires and Bogota. Those would be the main markets in our region. Okay, um, what are the main trends in the industry and, and how would this uh, group of trends impact Latin America? Uh, well, if we um, have to talk about trends, we can highlight four main ones. So the first one would be the shared service center maturity process. So. Depending on the maturity of the operations, the variables that determine the location of a shared service center will change. A large proportion of the survey companies we uh, included in, the, in our study are considered to be in early stages of maturity. These positions, you know, LATAM, very well as a decision as decisions are highly motivated by cost and the region is very cost effective. So the first one would be, you know, that companies that are starting shared service center operations 
are not that mature and they're basing their decisions out of cost effectiveness and our region is very cost effective. The second one would be um, about adopting uh, global operational structures. So we've seen that um, usually shared service centers start with a small scope of activities and covering small geographies. So what we've seen is that companies are evolving to what we call um, GBS or global business services, and they are providing um, support from one operation to their global um, different business units and operations. So this increasing level of centralization of operations is also very positive because they are performing more activities and covering more geographies from existing shared services. The third trend is the adoption of artificial intelligence. So and, and I think this is um, important to mention, based on a McKinsey study published in March uh, 2018, 68% of Latin America shared service centers perform manual tasks. If we look at the results of the JLL surveys, uh, survey, we see that companies are working towards automation in most operational activities, you know, such as lease, lease abstraction, but even so, only 35% plan to do it in the next two to six years. This is very, uh, this is a very important point, because if we consider the trend towards increasing the number of tasks and geography service from shared service centers in LATAM, which have low levels of automation, this could indicate that there would be an increased demand for label and space from um, where to perform these activities. You know, um, we've seen the level of automation is very low as the region is so cost effective. We predict that there would be an increase in demand for spaces to provide this service from and from labor force to work in these shared service centers. And, you know, last but not least, we believe that transformations to center of excellence would have a positive impact in a region. This represents the evolution from the operative shared service center to the value added one. So this model requires a highly trained workforce. We have seen that Asia and Europe position themselves as the most competitive market for this service. However, um, they are good in delivering value-added services. They are not cost efficient for delivering operational tasks. So based on this trend, we have identified a shift that will benefit Latin markets. So companies are dividing their shared service centers operations and location center and locating center of excellence in Europe and Asia and operative cent, uh, shared service centers in Latin. So I think those four together are trends that support that, you know, LATAM, it's a very, um, that it's a market that has, you know, lots of potential for creating a platform and delivering shared service centers. And is there anything that are beyond trends that are important to, to recognize? Well, um, if we want to focus, you know, and talk about things beyond trend, it's important to highlight that the com a company survey display a high degree of relevance due to their relative proximity to headquarters. So when we surveyed, there was one question that asked them, you know, what is very important in your location decision? And many companies decided that they wanted their um, shared service center close to the headquarters. This um, derives from the operational advantages of working in close proximity, both in terms of time zone and geography to the parent company. And currently, 70% of the companies that operate shared service centers are U.S. corporates. So um, that position, you know, this, trend, this new trend for local proximity will allow Latin America to position itself as a competitive and preferred location for the consolidation of shared service centers. At the same time, it's important to highlight that the maturity of markets such, such as Asia will have a positive substitution effect for a region. In, in both Asia and Europe, the market with the longest shared service center experience, these operating structures are evolving towards, you know, shared um, center of excellence. So we estimate that um, this change will accelerate the growth of shared service center industry in Latin America. 
which can position itself as the main recipient of high volume, but really low strategic value operations. According to our survey and what we predict in JLL, we estimate that by 2025, 605 new shared service centers operations will be incorporated into our region. That's a, a very good bit of information and a positive look for uh, outlook for Latin America in, in general. And, uh, you know, when we do these podcasts, there are questions that come up in the readers' minds after listening to the information that people like you have provided. And, and we're wondering if you'd be able to share with us a, an email address or a similar manner that people can communicate with you to get further detail. Oh, yeah, of course, Stephen. So my email, it's, um, I can spell it out to you because my name is not that easy to spell. So it would be A-G-U-S-T-I-N-A dot M-O-R-T-O-L-A at A-M dot J-L-L dot com. So that's my email. So if anyone had any question, please feel free to reach out. It would be, you know, a pleasure to talk about this topic. In addition, we'll be putting up, if it's okay with you, do you have a LinkedIn profile that we could uh, share? Oh, yeah. Yeah, of okay. course. It's under my same name. Okay, so we'll do that, and as well as a, a link to your company's uh, website. But Augustine, I really want to thank you today for joining us. Uh, this has been very interesting, and we wish you luck in all future endeavors that you undertake. Oh, um, Thank you, Stephen. It was a pleasure um, to be here. And so thank you for having me. Have a great week. Have a good day as well. Goodbye. Thank you for listening. Sign up to receive the Central American Group's quarterly newsletter by visiting www.thecentralamericangroup.com.